this week on the Retirement Quick Tips podcast, I'm sharing with you my experience with my no spend October, where I only spent money on the necessities and I had a few cheats along the way too. So I'll talk about that later in the week. But for today, I want to talk about the rules I've created for myself for this no spend month. And this is a very important thing. You don't want to just go on the fly and make decisions. You have to set out parameters, rules. This is what I mean by my no spend month. So I'm going to share that with you. And and I actually called it my spend fast month. Now, not to be confused with spending money as fast as possible, because basically fasting from spending money, which is like a totally different idea entirely. But I jokingly refer to it as my spend fast month. Or fasting from spending. Yeah, it sounds better. Spend fast, but not not the way you think. Okay, the rules I laid out for myself during my no spend month. Now, again, these are my rules. I'll actually talk about some additional considerations later in the week when I talk about how to kind of set yourself up for success if you want to embark on your own no spend month. But these are just my own rules. I did have to make a few exceptions and not totally fast from spending. So. The first rule that I laid out here is I didn't make my husband join me in this. In fact, I actually thought about not telling him that I was doing it because I wanted to see. We had some bigger bills in the month of September. And so he was kind of grumbling, (laughs) for lack of a better word, about all the money that was spent in the month of September. So he wasn't happy with our spending that month, but there was like two big bills. I had dental work done. That was huge expense out of pocket. It was just, it was just timing, you know, things, that's how things work out sometimes. But I know he wasn't super happy about what we spent in September. So I was like, Oh, I wonder if, if I don't say anything, I wonder if he'll even notice is cutting out my spending and cutting and just doing the necessities. Is that going to move the needle enough? Will he be like, wow, we have so much extra money at the end of the month. But I ended up telling him so uh, probably a weekend. I was like, by the way, I'm not spending any money this month. The reason I didn't ask him or invite him even to join me is because it was my idea, not his. I actually knew that he wouldn't be enthused about it. I didn't want to hold him to the same standard that I was, which is like, you know, I was always going to eat at home. I'm not going to buy anything that I don't need to buy. And the other way I looked at it is that for our household items, whether that's groceries or just things that come into the house. I mean, I'm the one buying 90% of the stuff that we buy anyways as a family. So I knew it wouldn't make much difference anyways, whether he participated or not. The second rule was that I was traveling to Atlanta for work. I was going to be gone for five days. So this one was tricky because I knew I was going to have to spend money unless I didn't eat for five days. So I basically set out a rule that because it was a work trip, I wasn't going on vacation. I wasn't going to cancel the plans that I had. And it was for work anyways. So I allowed myself to eat out. I allowed myself to buy coffee. Honestly, I actually started out, I was going to drink the coffee that was provided for free in my room, but that tasted like something at like a third world prison. So I was like, no, I'm going to Starbucks every day and getting my coffee. So I only bought food and drinks, nothing else. So in general, if I spend money for a trip or anything else, I was still going to spend the money on something I'd already scheduled rather than canceling it or trying to figure out a way around or like bring a giant Yeti cooler with a bunch of food. Like, no, I wasn't going to do that. So the other thing I did, and I would recommend that you would do as well if you do this yourself, is that when I knew I was going to do the no spend month, so like the last week or so in, in September, I looked ahead into October. My niece was having a birthday. I was looking at some of the expenses I thought I might have. So I bought her a birthday present in advance. I actually did a little panic spending. Like maybe if you knew a hurricane was coming and you're like hoarding all the stuff, like I did that the last week of September as well. So the other rule that I made was that I wasn't going to change my grocery spending. Now, if you were really serious about saving a lot of money, you could save a lot of money just by changing your grocery habits and really just focusing on the necessities. But I didn't want to agonize over every single thing that I put in my cart at the grocery store. And it's tricky too, because I buy juice and Spindrift, my favorite. I love Spindrift. 
I buy fruit snacks and snacks for my kids' school. And so are those all necessities? No. But if you are really wanting to cut back, buying only essentials, trying to eat the food you already have in your pantry, your freezer, that'd be an excellent way to reduce your spending. But I said, you know what, I'm just going to keep my grocery bills and my grocery habits the same. Some of these are technically not necessities, but I wasn't going to agonize over that. The other thing is deciding what are actually necessities. So obviously like gas and groceries, those are necessities. But even within that, there's a lot of wiggle room. You could spend a lot of money on groceries. That's not necessary. You could spend money on gas because you took a road trip. Is that a necessity? No, that's different than going to work every day and spending the money on gas for that. So some of the things that I said no to and was going to completely fast from would be no spending on any activities or entertainment. Now, I actually broke this rule one time. I'll talk about that later in the week. But at the outset, my intention was to spend zero dollars whatsoever on entertainment. The other one was no eating out and no getting any coffee or drinks, basically no buying food that didn't come from a grocery store. And also, you know, not buying any clothes, shoes, household items, unless it was something, you know, like we're out of toilet paper or something. So I tried to avoid spending money on anything I could put off. So there's a lot of things that, yes, you will need that thing, but maybe you don't need it right now. And so I made a list for anything that I wanted to buy after the month was over. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. So those are the rules I had for myself. As you can see, there's so much gray area between necessity and like what is a true need and what is a want. Setting up those parameters in the beginning of a no spend month is really important. So you're not agonizing over little tiny spending decisions if you were to embark on this no spend month on your own. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. I'm super excited tomorrow. In my opinion, it's the best episode of the week. I'm going to talk about the things that I learned, the five most valuable things I learned during my no spend month. A lot of that was a surprise. Like I wasn't expecting to have learned that particular lesson. So thank you so much for listening. My name is Ashley Michike, and this is the Retirement Quick Tips Podcast.